Okay, well, I want to introduce you to my friend. This is Saima Bhatti, and she has uh, attended here for a long time, off and on. And uh, she, I think, and then I, I can't remember if it was you or not at the salt room when I went in that recognized that recognized my voice. She couldn't remember where she knew me from, and she said she worked out to me every day. Um, I said, yeah, cool. I didn't know anybody would work out to my messages, but I like that. <laughs> anyway, so she's an acupuncturist now, still at the salt room, but has a really important, um, has a really important calling that I wanted her, uh, to share a little about with you called Unplug. So here's Saima. Thank you. Um, thank you. It's great. Uh, actually, <laughs> um, I was, I work at the salt room and I was at work a few weeks ago and I was sending a text message and I was updating my Facebook status and I was answering an email all at the same time. And um, one of the staff members came and um, was trying to talk to me and they were like, God, you're always on your phone. And they walked away. And my immediate reaction was to like want to be defensive, like you have no idea how important it is that I do all these things at one time right now. Um, and then I just got like, she wanted to connect with me. and. Um, and so I got that I have the opportunity to contribute to people just with my presence. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, and, uh, and so I miss out on the opportunity to participate in life fully when I'm answering emails and, you know, like prioritizing text messages. And, and devices are great. I love them as much as the next person. They make things useful. But I'm um, intending to create a movement, um, something that restores uh, this aspect of the human spirit that I find really important, uh, connectedness. And um, so this weekend is actually the uh, first ex experiment of this. I have uh, 25 people, different households participating. They've unplugged their cell phones and they've prepared people in their lives for this. They're not on their computers, they're not on their televisions and they're just with each other, with the people they live with and the people they come in contact with this weekend. And uh, I'll find out how it goes for them in a couple days when they all share on the group page that I've created on Facebook for people to be able to share about that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's it's yeah. So it's integrated, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if you if you have um, oh great yes thank you. Um, so if you don't want to uh, have people make that face at you when they're trying to get your attention and. Uh, um, you want to participate in life and um, help make me make this a nationally recognized thing, I'd like to create an unplugged day, um, then uh, email me and I'll add you to the Facebook group and we'll see what we can create together. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. I mean, does this team rock it or what? Whoa! <laughs> you know what? I think this is the church of the cool people. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it just is, right? I said to somebody the other day, now, pretty soon our church is going to be known as the church for cool people. I just said that. I said, I don't know if y'all are quite ready or not, but when you're ready to be cool, you come to our church, Right? Where we act like the Spirit of God is upon us. Amen? We're not afraid to act like it. Right? And sometimes that means going crazy. Sometimes that means very still. Very still. Right? Sometimes that means chill, baby. Right? Sometimes that means ultra chill. Right? Like this right here. Yeah. Chill, baby. You know what I'm saying? We get real. We chill and get real. I'm telling you. This is a church for the soul that knows how to move and change and shift. This is what's happening in life. Yeah. That's cool, right? To me, that's cool. I mean, you know, we, we, follow, uh, we follow somebody who is totally cool in his time. A guy who was homeless but had people following him around anyway, right? Jesus was the first itinerant preacher, amen? Went from town to town and had people leave their jobs just to go where he went. That's cool, right? That's happening. 
He had no home, but he wore the finest robe anybody had ever seen with no seams. Look at our clothes right here today. Look at all these seams. Can you imagine a robe with no seams? That's rich. That was rich. So we want to be fabulous. We want to be fabulous in our spiritual walk, right? To not be ashamed of who we are and take our faith right into everything that we do, right? Take our energy, our consciousness. Well, today is about just that, living from that higher self that you are, living from that divine self that's totally fabulous in every way. Fabulous is the word for the day. I just decided. Right? Be cool and be fabulous and you're good, right? <clears throat> um. We're going to look at an old-time story today from the Hebrew Bible, uh, otherwise known as the uh, Old Testament. And some people here, you know how sometimes I say, dust off your old Bibles? Somebody came up to me and said, some of us have to buy one for the very first time. So I'm giving you the scripture in advance. It's Jonah, so you can look up in the front where it is and turn there by the time I get there, okay? So today, uh, today is about... Something very, very important, very important. This begins a four-week series. I haven't said much about it because um, I haven't said much about it because we've had so many other services and so much else going on. It's like I wanted to start the new year fresh. It's a series I've created on my own, and um, I hope, like our prosperity program that I created, this will actually someday be written down, and we can get that out to other churches to use as well. This Sunday, somebody started um, uh, our prosperity curriculum from this ministry in Des Plaines, Illinois, in unity there. So, isn't that great? That's exciting. <clears throat> I don't know, the 915 wasn't very excited. They just went, yeah, okay. But I'm excited. I'm excited because it's the first church outside of ours to do it. And then after this one, once I get his feedback and make any necessary edits and changes, we'll then uh, advertise it to the movement. And that's going to be really important time for the ministry. All the money that comes in for that book will go right to the church, just so you know. I'm not trying to make money off the, on the side or anything like that. Uh, it's all the money goes to the church because we want our whole movement of unity to be prosperous, right? Right, so one of my personal callings is to make a bigger difference in the unity movement. That's one of my personal callings. It's, it's, I think it's a calling of the ministry, too, because as the ministry started with Carolyn Hightower many years ago, she was very connected to Charles Fillmore and even, even taught at Unity Village. So since this church's inception, there's been a connection to the greater movement. So we want to continue that tradition and expand on it, right? Because there was just a fraction of the people here before. So now we have an even bigger opportunity. So today is about, so week, I'm going to give you the four weeks, and today is week one is the calling, right? The series is called Called to Be. So all this month... Uh, for 2015, the best year ever, we're going to be praying, right, what is my calling? So today, week one is the calling. Week two is the learning. That's where we're going to look at life's trials, tribulations, all the lessons in life. Week three is about the embodiment. Week four is the sacred. How do we then live in the world in our calling, okay? So that's today. Today is about the calling. I am called by God. Will you say that with me? I am called by God. I am called by God. You said it like you meant it. That makes me so happy. It could almost make me cry the way you said it. I am called by God. That's the truth. And what are you called to be? Well, you're called to be more. You're called to be more than your current situation. You're called to be more than your current job. You're called to be more than your current condition. But I'm not meaning necessarily you change your job. I'm not even meaning that, right? Everybody, if I ever talk about this, people run up to me and say, I did just what you said, and I went out and quit my job. I, no, I did not say that. I did not say that. Now, however, I have had people say, though, you know what? I just lost my job, and man, was that a call from spirit. Right? It, in other words, for some of us to hear the call, crisis has to happen. That, that's, I hate to admit it, but at many times in my life, that's been true for me. Right? That something bad has to happen where I go, what is going on? Many people that I work with on financial uh, challenge, they have to file bankruptcy before they admit there's a problem. The, the credit card bills and the creditors calling don't mean anything until finally they have to uh, file for bankruptcy. Then they call and say, you know, all right, this prosperity thing you talk about, maybe I'm ready to hear it. Maybe. Maybe not. Some people still are not ready to hear it then. Right? So it's an important lesson. Many are called. The scriptures say this. 
Many are called, few are chosen. Okay, I want to explain that verse just right, right from the get-go because I love this verse. And where, the way I grew up hearing that verse, uh, now many of you know I, um, I went to a private Christian school. And uh, now that school, there was a lot of talk of predestination. Does everybody know that word? Prede- in other words, some get into the kingdom and some don't. We're not sure which ones, but go ahead and get saved just in case. You know, we're pretty sure, you know, it was pretty much sure everybody in that church, though, would be, you know. But everybody else, we're not too sure about. Does anybody know what I mean? Okay. All right. So, so that verse, that verse was used to say, some are in the kingdom, some are out. All right. So I'm not meaning that. And I want to tell you a little bit of the story. This is from Matthew 22, if you want to look it up. It's Matthew 22, 1 through 14. And I'm, many are called, few are chosen. It's actually, I, I believe, it's verse 14. If any Bible student wants to look it up and say, yes, you're correct, that would make me thrilled if somebody would look that up and tell me. But it's about, um, and somebody is looking it up on their iPhone, that is okay, too. It's kind of cheating, it's kind of cheating, but I'm going to let you get by with it today. So what happens is Jesus is telling a parable, and he says, the kingdom of heaven is kind of like, it is 14, I love you for that. Would like it even better if it were with a real Bible. No, you're so good. No, I love it. I love you for it. Okay. Back to me, though. Back to me. (laughs) Now, Chris knows I love him. That's why I can do that. Okay. So in the verse, Jesus said, hey, you know, the kingdom of heaven is kind of like this, right? This is how we'd always start a story. Hey, you know, the kingdom of heaven is kind of like this. In other words, if I try to tell you, you're not going to get it. And so I'm going to give you a story to think about it. Okay. So I'm going to give you this story. It's kind of like this, this guy who has a wedding, right? And he invites all these people, but nobody comes. Who's ever heard of a wedding where nobody comes? Right? So they don't come, so then he says, you know what, forget it. All these people I invited, never mind. Open the doors, invite everybody on the streets. Okay, just, let's just invite them all in. And then everybody comes in, you know, and then there's one person who's not properly dressed for the occasion. And the master says, now, How'd you get in here without a robe? And the guy, you know, is the scriptures say he was astonished. And the master says, you know, out with you to the wailing and gnashing of teeth. You're not prepared for a holy event. You're out. The verse after that says, many are called, few are chosen. In other words, you have to be ready for the feast. You have to be. So many are called, few are chosen. I think it means few choose in to the sacred. Few choose in. I know it's a play on the words. That's what it means. What else could it possibly mean? Many are called. Everybody was called, but not everybody chose in to the, what was really happening. Right? So in other words, there's a feast waiting for you. Are you going to choose in or not? Are you going to come properly attired? What is your consciousness going to be when you walk into this place? You hung over from the night before, then you're not properly attired to receive what's here. Right? You're not properly attired then. I've had to fire people working with me. I say, if you're, drink, if you're still drinking, you know what? Our work here, what can we do? I, ca- I can't only work so much when you're so foggy all the time. You're not in reality. Get with the program. Right? Right? So are you going to be properly attired to receive the good God has for you? That's really the question there. Right? So many are called, few are chosen. Are you ready to receive the gift God has for you. Because every moment of every day, always, you are being called. You have already been chosen. It's already been done for you. Right? The feast is waiting. So are you going to answer God's call in your life or not? You choose. And it's such a big, it's such a big calling, right? To think, oh, I'm called by God. Oh, by the way, I just watched again um, after many years of not watching it. You remember the original Star Wars, not the original, original that's come out, but the original number four that came out like 35 years ago that actually said Star Wars? Yeah. All those recent ones, my gosh, they're a little intense. But the original one, and I love to watch it again, and I I was so reminded of the hero's journey, right, and Luke Skywalker's call, right? So how he was called into, even though though his whole life had wanted to be this, 
this Jedi Knight, as soon as he got called, he said, oh, no, 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 I can't go. I got to stay home with, you know, and help with the crops and everything. You remember that? Well, it's exactly how it is in the scriptures. And we're going to look at it right now in the book of Jonah. And I have a graphic for you to go with the scripture. The scriptures say this from Jonah 1. It says, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, some of Amittai, saying, now I'm going to stop right there. The word of the, Lord came, of the Lord came to Jonah. That means what? God's call. Okay? That's Jonah's call right there. And then it says, Go at once to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah set out to flee to Tarshish. You see where that is? Okay, just, just making sure. From the presence of the Lord. He went down first to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid his fare, went on board, and went with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. Don't you love Jonah? Come on. So, so he, he was told by God to go here, right, here, and he goes here. But at first he had to go here to get there, just all the way, all the way across the Mediterranean, right? Could not be further than where God stands. At, raise your hand if you've ever done this. <laughs> right? Everyone does it. That's how you know you were right on target. That's how you know you've heard God's call if you say, no, not me. You got the wrong girl. You got the wrong man here, right? I must have heard somebody else's call. God says, no. And you know what Jonah did? He could not get far enough away, see? Because the story goes on, and we'll get into more of it in the next couple of weeks, but as his... As he gets on the boat, you know what happens, right? A big storm comes up, and all the sailors are praying, and Jonah, does, Jonah goes to sleep. And so they notice, I mean, here's this one guy sleep. What are you doing asleep, man? Wake up, dude. What's wrong with you? Right? Get up. And then they say, are you cause of this? Well, yeah, maybe. He says, you know, God told me to do this thing, and I, I kind of went the wrong way and everything. So he, like, said, go this way. So I went this way, you know. And they said, man, you are nuts. You know, we're going to throw you overboard and, and see how this goes for us. And, of course, everything went a lot better once they threw Jonah overboard. And then it, the scriptures goes on to tell us that God provided a fish, right, to, to, uh, to eat, to, to um, swallow Jonah for three days. So that, we'll get to the three-day part next week. That's the learning Right, that's the learning part is the three days in the fish. When I was a kid, though, I used to picture uh, this story. I would picture like Jonah in that whale, like making a little campfire and making do. I'm like, how does that happen for three days? Anyways, so, so many of us, just like Jonah, and I, I think, I hope the map helps. I love seeing this map. I laughed as soon as I saw it. It's exactly what all of us do. So what I'm saying to you is every one of us already knows what our calling is. I absolutely know what mine is, and, and there's, there's, I, I just get a little ready for a little more and then a little more. It's like you learn to live into the calling more every day, and certainly with each year as we're starting the year new. Right now, there's all this wonderful supported energy coming in to help you move forward in your newness, right? It's like it's New Year. There's a lot of positive energy. People are setting resolutions, right? But what we want to do this year instead of setting resolutions we want our calling to be first so that our resolutions and goals come under what God's calling is for us instead of just empty resolutions. Most people, and I, I read this last year, most people by, the, by like the second week of the year have completely forgotten all of their resolutions. Although there was one I liked this year. We guys put the, my favorite resolution I saw this year, the uh, comic, we guys put that up there? Yeah, Earl's New Year's resolution. I will try to live in the here and now, here and now. That's the best one I've seen all year. Best one, best one. But see, that, that real, even that one, that still starts from what? From the calling aspect. So we're all called to, to live God, of course. But in your, in your career, in your life, what does that mean? What does that mean in your particular situation? Because in each situation, it's going to be very, very different how that, how that lives, Right? I mean, if you work with numbers, you know, how, how, do you pour, how, do you, how do you pour God into your work with numbers? Oh, that's easy, right? You start your day, first of all, by committing your work to God, number one. And then you see how God wants to use that talent with numbers. 
Is it can to continue in the work? Is it to give your work away to a nonprofit or support your local church by serving on the board? Right? How are you wanting to use that gift that God gave you? So the calling becomes the 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 living from your divine highest self. Right? It it's the calling is about living from your highest self. And in unity, we often call that your soul or the Christ of you. So the calling is about learning to hear God's voice for you, moving in and through your life so that then you live into that calling in the world. That's the idea. So it's not about quitting your job, although some people do that. It's not about uh, uh, getting a job, although those are wonderful things. It's about, the, it's about your soul's purpose, really. And so, I mean, it might touch your job, but, but don't think of it in terms of, we, we think really linear uh, uh, often. It's like, okay, I'm called, that means I need to go serve in Africa. And, and that's wonderful, and a couple of our members are actually doing that. Cool. One of, our, one of our graduates from our YOU is about to go serve in the Peace Corps in Africa. Wonderful. He's so on purpose. I'm so proud of him for doing that. But that might be not your call. It could be something little, like somebody came through the line and said, well, can my call just be, you know, this? Absolutely. Remember that for me in my life, every small little change that I make, every small one, makes, it makes, um, the ripple effects are, what's the word? Magnanimous, right? That's not exactly the word, but it so goes out far beyond, the, the impact goes far beyond what I would imagine from one small change, right? From one small change. And, you know, many years ago, my healing journey started uh, just by getting a, a, a list of um, kind of strange diagnoses that nobody could figure out what was wrong with me. And, and it really just prompted me to try a, a different kind of way of dealing with my, with my health challenge. And that changed everything for me. I started eating better. I was doing my personal work. I shared a little bit on, on you know, New Year's Eve about the beginning of my working on my, uh, myself after that conversation with my mom that I mentioned. So it was a combination of things, of working on myself, but it was that, it was that healing crisis that really brought a change for me, right? It's, it's, like, it's like it woke me up. Have you ever needed to be woken up? It's like all of a sudden, okay, somebody, spirit, you have my attention. Now, I'm not saying God did it to me. I'm saying my soul was ready to grow and was willing to do anything to get me to pay attention. Have you ever heard this uh, phrase, heed the call, right? In other words... Pay attention. You don't have to be in crisis or bankruptcy or hospital or whatever to hear God's call. God is always talking. God is always calling you to be more. You can hear it right here, right now, comfortable in these pews. And you don't have to go through hell and back, right, to, to hear God's call. I hear God's call in my life. Will you say that with me? I hear God's call in my life. And I'm here to tell you, you know what it is. You know what it is. It's probably something you love to do ever since you were a little kid. Probably. It's always been with you. And each year, maybe you live into it a little more, and then another year, maybe you don't, and then maybe another year you don't, and then you say, oh, yeah. It's, so it's like really what I'm talking about is living from your joy, living what you know you were meant to do. That's what it really means to live on purpose. You know, um, this, I knew this uh, gal, and she was... Um, she was doing a lot of prosperity work. She was working with Edwin Gaines, you know, one of our movement's prosperity teachers. And she really loved making these bracelets for people. And she was making these bracelets, making these bracelets. And she just wanted to be about it because it gave her a lot of joy. She didn't have anything to do with her work or what she was paid for. And she'd give them to gifts as people. And then a little store picked them up. Well, then this, like, national, you know, this corporation picked them up and bought, like, a million bracelets. I mean, it was beyond what she could have ever imagined. And it was only because... She was doing what she was called to do, just living from her joy. It's a very simple thing that was done after hours, right? So remember that your calling is going to be something probably nobody but you would even know that you're doing. And it feels to me like in my life the most important things have been the very small things that I do when no one's looking. Do you know what I mean by that? How you work your prayer practice, what things you allow into your consciousness or not, what people you hang out with, what energy you're attracted to, how you respond to certain energies, right? And only you know 
in you what's right for your journey. You know what I'm saying. It's the littlest things is how you, you're going to start answering God's call for you. You know, many people this year are saying, I want to lose weight, and that's wonderful. I want to do this. I want to do that. But let's start from what is God's call for my life first and then let those things out picture naturally rather than trying to force a resolution. Are you with me on that? You know, I mean, there's wonderful ways. You want to find out about health and fitness, join our health and fitness team. I'm even going to share a little later this year on some of my journey with, with that. I think it's so important to share that, to get together and get support. So ra rather than forcing the best year ever, let's allow God to guide our lives, right, and know that we are called and we have been chosen, but we have to choose in to God's goodness for our life. Amen? We have to choose in. God's will for me is good. Will you say that? God's will for me is good. You know, I know many, um, I know many single people, couples, and families right now in this ministry that are so doing what God's calling them to do. It is so um, inspiring to watch. So if you're not aware of those things, you need to come here and get a little more involved and, and really connect with people so you can get inspired yourself to move forward in your own life. Right? God is calling me right now, this moment, every day. And when you see other people answering the call, you'll be inspired by it. In a few minutes, I have a friend of mine. She's going to share... Um, a little bit about a program she started called Unplugged. It's about unplugging from technology for periods of time. She'll tell you a little more about it later. But I invited her to speak today because that's part of her call, is to see people connect more and more and more, right? I mean, devices are fine, but, right, we don't want to choose devices over relationship. Amen? Amen? Okay. All right. God is calling me higher. Will you say that with me? God is calling me higher. So I want you to remember, you are not your condition, you are not your job, you are not your paycheck. You are a soul. I don't care who you are, what you do, how much you make, who you sleep, who you sleep with, who you slept with, how old you are, what nationality you are, what you think about yourself, what your history is. You are a soul that has a purpose, and it's up to you to find it. So just pray with me for a moment, if you will. Thank you, God, for the power of God that is in this room, that's in each one of us. Thank you, God, that we are called to be more. We are called to live from our divine self, from our highest self. Our prayer is to ready ourselves for the feast that you prepare for us. Our prayer is to work with our consciousness, to do our prayers, to seek support when we need it, to seek to hear your voice in our life. We know that your will for us is good and that, it, and that as we hear you, it's going to require us to move forward in faith into uncomfortable zones, into places we don't know yet, which means we're going to need you even more. Thank you, God, for our time together today. We are grateful. We are blessed. Let's rest for a few moments in silence just as we have time alone with God in our own soul. Thank you, God, that we have been called and we are chosen. I, for myself, right now, choose in. I'm ready. I'm ready for my next step. That's my prayer for each soul here. I don't want one left behind. I want each soul. That's my prayer, that each one of us will hear the call of our heart, the call of our soul, to move forward in faith, trusting God even more for our next steps. For our time together today, we are grateful, we are blessed, and we say thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God. Together, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God, and so it is. Amen.